Howdy, Grumble Crew. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what is a composting toilet. That was actually really hard to do, despite the fact that I've bought a composting toilet, designed a composting toilet, manufactured a composting toilet, and now sell composting toilets. I cannot believe how hard it was. So we're going to try and dispel the myths and clarify things and try and say, what is a composting toilet? Perhaps as enlightening as what is a composting toilet, it's actually more helpful to start with what a composting toilet is not or what is not a composting toilet. So coming up are a few types of toilet that we believe to be distinct from a composting toilet. So firstly, a composting toilet is not a bucket toilet. A bucket toilet may not be lined with a bag and it's one in which both urine and feces are mixed in the same container. This type of toilet was actually once very common, even in the West, and actually persisted in Australia until the latter part of the 20th century. Now, a bucket toilet can be upgraded simply by adding a second bucket. This would make it a two bucket system and you've immediately separated urine from feces. The two bucket system is the simplest form of urine diverting toilet. It's the simplest way to reduce odors while still being a bucket toilet and it's incredibly popular as an emergency toilet in disaster prone areas. A bucket toilet can be upgraded to a basic composting toilet with the addition of a carbon rich material such as sawdust. Adding a couple of hand handfuls at the start and then adding more carbon rich material after each time you use the toilet will start the composting process within the bucket. It's this addition of carbon rich material which helps to reduce the odor. A composting toilet as commonly described does not completely treat human waste unless it is part of a composting system. This may come as a shock and is perhaps the largest criticism of composting toilets, but a small handful of sawdust on top of your fresh poo, which could have just been deposited, is not going to magically become pathogen free like a unicorn turd. Some people differentiate between compost toilet and composting toilet as a compost toilet doesn't fully compost the material, but a composting toilet does. And through composting the material, it achieves pathogen reduction. By this definition, there is not a single composting toilet on the market, as has been argued by Baird and Baird. And that's because continuous composting toilet systems always have the potential for pathogen transmission. Now, I believe this could be a working distinction between compost toilet and composting toilet, but until a composting toilet like this actually exists on the market, it seems a moot point. Another thing a composting toilet is not is a pit toilet. Digging a hole in the ground, covering it in concrete slab with a drop hole and constructing a shelter does not make a composting toilet. This is also true of ventilated improved pit toilets. So a pit toilet, as the name suggests, features the use of a pit, which may or may not infiltrate liquids into the ground. The pit acts primarily as a device for the storage and very limited treatment takes place. The conditions within the pit are not aerobic and they lead to a foul smell. And pit toilets, in addition, are often poorly lit and small children commonly fall into them, getting either injured or killed. It's a horrible, horrible way to die. A composting toilet is also not a vermiculture toilet. Now, don't get me wrong. I think vermiculture toilets are genius and tiger toilets are probably one of the best solutions to come out of the Gates Foundation reinvent the toilet challenge. But worms don't actually compost. Instead, composting is defined as a controlled aerobic process that converts organic materials into nutrient rich, biologically stable soil amendment or mulch through natural decomposition. Worm castings, another fancy name for worm poop, are the byproduct of our digestion by worms. They are not decomposition. A composting toilet can be urine diverting and a urine diverting toilet can be a composting toilet, but they don't have to be. Composting toilets don't have to feature urine diversion. Many do as it reduces odor and the volume of bulky material required. It also therefore reduces the cost of running the toilet and the amount of emptying that's required. Conversely, a urine diverting toilet does not have to be a composting toilet. In fact, there are even now flush toilets that feature urine diversion to reduce the amount of water needed. Just because a toilet features a urine diverter does not necessarily make it a composting toilet. A composting toilet does not necessarily have an agitator, but we believe it helps. When I designed Cuddy, I designed it with an agitator because I wanted the best composting toilet possible. Having an agitator has several important benefits. The first benefit is reduced odor. Having an agitator helps the composting process get established much faster. Agitating also helps coax your deposits in that carbon rich material to reduce odor by covering them 
and further breaks them apart to accelerate decomposition. The next benefit is a reduced footprint. With an agitator, all balking material can be added at the start and deposits then mixed as they are added. This reduces the need for storing that bulky bulking material near your toilet, saving precious space. The last one is convenience. Adding bulking material after each use to the toilet can be messy. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Small amounts of cover material can get spilled in transfer and that will require a cleanup. With an agitator, this cleanup effort after every use is reduced at the price of not having the materials in the bin conveniently pre-bagged for disposal. Now this convenience is a personal decision. We launched Cuddy Lite after our customers wanted the, all the advanced features of Cuddy just without the agitator for that conveniently pre-bagged poop. Composting toilets are dry toilets normally. When a composting toilet does not feature water for flushing, it can also be referred to as a dry toilet. Where a urine diverter is also used, the toilet can also be classified as a urine diverting dry toilet, or UDDT, sexy name. However, a toilet that is a UDDT is not necessarily a composting toilet, unless it begins the composting process. So you could call Cuddy a urine diverting dry composting toilet, but it's really not a sexy name. So when is a composting toilet not a dry toilet? when it uses water for flushing and conveyance of the solid waste. Technically, it's a composting toilet, so it wouldn't be solid waste. Our favorite device for this is the Aquatron, which separates liquids and flush water from the solids without any moving parts, just through the magical physics of adhesion. It is genius. There are several types of composting toilet available, and for each one, the composting toilet system will look slightly different. Coming up are the main types of composting toilets. Batch composting toilet. This is the most common type of composting toilet and it's what most people will think of when they hear the term composting toilet. With this system, the toilet materials are manually transferred to a central composting system or compost pile. Urine diversion is common in these types of systems, similar to Cuddy, due to the ease of managing urine separately and the reduced odors. Separating the liquid and not requiring additional bulking material to absorb that liquid means not handling the solid materials as often and less trips to the compost pile. Chamber or mouldering toilets. The chamber or mouldering toilet is like a scaled up version of a smaller batch composting toilet. A larger chamber means less frequent maintenance and less emptying. Split system composting toilets. The split system composting toilet actually features two or more chambers that are used alternatively. The first chamber is filled and then covered over to compost while a second is used. When the second is full, the contents of the first should be composted and ready to be removed and used so that that original chamber can be used again while the second compost. Now this type of system has been developed and promoted throughout the world and is one of the cheapest, safest and simplest forms of sustainable sanitation. It's fantastic. Self-contained composting toilet. Self-contained composting toilets are simple to install and typically only require a modest amount of electricity. Cuddy is an example of a self-contained composting toilet. They typically feature an agitator for the solids bin and ventilation by means of a small electric fan to provide airflow and reduce odor. Some may even feature heating elements to help dry the materials and to help dry out the urine if urine diversion is not employed. Central composting systems. Now a central composting system may have multiple toilets connected to a central composting vessel. Toilet materials are transported via a means or conveyance such as a low flush or vacuum flush or just a direct drop. The central composting chamber should be sized appropriately for the number of persons and toilets that feed it so that it only needs to be maintained periodically, say every three months. If you want to learn more about composting toilet systems, check out our other article. So what is a composting toilet? The definition of composting toilet is evolving quickly as people are embracing it as a more sustainable form of sanitation throughout the world. Currently, the term composting toilet most often refers to a toilet that contains human waste in conditions to encourage materials to start composting. When the contents of the toilet are composted, the whole system can be referred to as a composting toilet system. That's it for this video. If it's been helpful, give it a thumbs up to boost my ego. If you've got thoughts or suggestions, then leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe for more tips on composting toilets and some hot developments coming later this year. Cheers, Comfort Crew.